Hello everyone, welcome to XSTEM All Access. I'm Jay Flores and I'm excited to be part of this virtual XSTEM series showcasing some of the coolest minds in STEM. Have you ever wondered what it's like to work in a STEM field? Like marine biology, engineering, wildlife conservation, or math? Are you curious about careers in science and technology, but unsure what jobs are out there? Or maybe you have no idea what type of career to pursue and you're searching for a little inspiration. If you fall into any of these categories, or even if you're just here for fun, you've come to the right place. As your guest host for this episode, I'm excited to chat with shark researchers and underwater cinematographers, Lauren and Joe Romero. I'm gonna ask all the questions you'd like to know about their job, like what inspires them, how they found their path, and what's happening in the world of shark research and conservation. Make sure you subscribe in the YouTube description below and follow us on social media to get XSTEM updates. New episodes will be released all year and you won't want to miss a single one. Educators, this episode has a companion NGSS and Castle Align lesson plan developed by professional educators just for you. Scan this code to access the lesson plan so you can easily incorporate it into your classroom activities. From here, you'll also have access to other free STEM resources from today's speakers, our partners, and more. Students, with your parents' permission, tell us how you were inspired today by tagging us at USA Science Fest, hashtag XSTEM, and me at J Flores Inspires. This free STEM program is brought to you by the USA Science and Engineering Festival. The mission of the USA Science and Engineering Festival is to inspire the next generation about careers in STEM. You can check out their other free programs and events for teachers and students at usasciencefestival.org. Before we begin, please join me in thanking our partners, the US Air Force, the US Space Force, and the Discovery Channel for making this XSTEM series possible. Let me tell you a little bit about myself. I grew up super curious and I had wonderful parents that allowed me to explore that curiosity and great teachers that helped me take that exploration even further. Eventually, I studied mechanical engineering and started my career as an engineer. Eventually, I went off into the world of entrepreneurship and now I focus on inspiring students and educators like you to continue to do really cool things with STEM so that you can invent the change that you want to see in the world. I've done everything from host TV shows like Make 48 to compete on American Ninja Warrior and bring science to the stage. And I'm really excited to be with all of you here today. I hope you're as excited as I am to meet today's speakers. Can you imagine a job that takes you into the ocean and face to face with sharks? Most of us would think twice before jumping into the water with an apex predator. But for today's speakers, that's just another day in the office. Lauren and Joe Romero are a husband and wife shark researching team. Lauren is a marine scientist and cinematographer currently working towards her PhD in oceanography from the University of Rhode Island with a focus on shark behavior. Joe is a naturalist and award-winning cinematographer who has spent over a decade filming and interacting with sharks all over the world. Their work has been featured on the Discovery Channel, National Geographic, and Animal Planet to name a few. Together, they study sharks and their behavior with a focus on the conservation of these amazing creatures. Please join me in welcoming Lauren and Joe Romero. Thank you, Jay. We're really excited to be here. Lauren and Joe, let's dive right into our questions because I know this audience is thrilled to hear about your exciting careers. You both have a passion for sharks and have dedicated your careers to studying and documenting these awe-inspiring creatures. What inspired each of you to embark on a career in shark exploration? Uh, I, what inspired me was really, I, I was a little kid from the Azores, and when I came to this country, I really couldn't speak English. So a lot of the stuff that I saw on TV is what inspired me. I watched a lot of monster movies and natural history stuff, and sharks were always a really big part of that for me. And uh, I remember seeing... Jaws, which was like the biggest movie when I was a kid, and that really motivated me into like being very afraid of sharks. And at that point in my life, being afraid of sharks was just was like the only thing I had ever done. So it was just like it's something that like brought me to a position where I just I couldn't get them out of my head. And then when I really saw a shark, it was just something that 
you know, really inspired me to keep going with it. It was just something my, my whole life it's been with me. What inspired me to get into this career was I spent a lot of time on the water growing up. Um, my family had their own boat, so we spent a lot of time traveling around, and I really got to enjoy the ocean and see a lot of animals. It's actually where I saw my first shark was in the wild, and that really sparked my first interest. And then as I learned more and more about them from books or movies, my passion just grew from there. I think it's great that both of you either found or grew your interest in sharks through books and movies because those are things that most everyone has access to. And your work as cinematographers is providing even more resources for students to learn about sharks, even if they live far away from an ocean. So students, for those of you who have an interest in sharks or any STEM topic that isn't available in your backyard, head to the library for inspiration. Lauren, did you encounter any roadblocks or obstacles in your career path? If so, how did you overcome those and how did they influence who you are today? The biggest roadblock for me, I would say, is finding something that I really enjoy doing. You know, the shark field is really small. A lot of people want to get involved and you get a lot of rejections. And I had to do jobs that I didn't necessarily see myself doing long term but those experiences help me meet people in the field and looking back on them, if I didn't have them and I didn't go through those, um, I wouldn't be where I am today. So I really wouldn't change anything um, about my experience. I think throughout anybody's journey, you have roadblocks and then they just lead you. You're able to carry those with you in, into the future. We can't always avoid obstacles in our career path, but they can be valuable learning experiences and even opportunities for a new direction that you hadn't considered. In my training for American Ninja Warrior, I literally face obstacles every day. And it's just learning to go after that challenge and understanding that when you do overcome those obstacles, there's a really awesome feeling on the other end of that. And you get to do really cool things that you wouldn't have been able to do otherwise. So Lauren and Joe, Sharks are amongst the most fascinating creatures, but most of us would go through great lengths to avoid being in the water with them. So tell us what it's like to dive in their environment and how it feels to be face to face with such an amazing, but potentially dangerous creature. Being face to face with sharks, I feel is really humbling because you're in the presence of an apex predator. We spend a lot of our time trying to figure out and understand the behavior of these animals so that we can understand every move that they make and try to predict the next. I do feel that if you ever get the chance to be in the water with these animals, that it will change the way that you feel about them because ultimately at the end of the day, they do have more to fear from us than we do from them and we do see that they are afraid of us. Yeah, my philosophies about being in the water with sharks have gone from many different directions over the years, but one thing that hasn't changed is that I don't feel fearful of them because they're, most of them are like fearful of us. Uh, most sharks are very shy in nature and it's hard to get close to them, but you learn a lot about that when you spend a lot of time in the water with them. They teach you to respect them, they teach you patience, they're different to st the stress you feel trying to get them on film, but that being said, sometimes they do do unexpected things like biting cameras and, I, I, you know, the more that I know about them, the more that I don't, I don't know. At the end of the day, I'm afraid of them running away from me these days. You know, I would say I'm more afraid of weather than the sharks these days. It must be an amazing experience to swim with sharks. I love the ocean and I love animals, but this is a little bit different. <laughs> so as cinematographers, your camera is obviously a very important tool in your toolbox. As researchers though, what other innovative technologies do you use to study sharks? And like, what do they tell us? Uh, Lauren can go really into the innovation of like research tools, but as far as like camera care, there's like, they're just always getting better. Like film equipment is just increasing in, in, in ability every single year. Cameras are getting smaller. We're able to put them in different places. We're able to follow sharks into different areas. We're able to like go to different depths. I mean, it seems like the advancements in cameras are going faster than we can 
you know, develop technology to, to use them in. Cameras are a really important tool for us, even as researchers. We try and incorporate cameras into every single aspect that we do. We have deep sea remote cameras that go all the way to 3,000 feet and they just sit on the ocean floor and just watch what's happening. And the great thing about these is that us as humans, we cannot physically go down there for long periods of time and we can't even reach to some parts of the ocean floor. But these cameras really allow us to just watch and observe what is happening down there for really long periods of time. We also have fin cameras that go right on the fin of the shark and that'll give a first view perspective of what the shark is doing. And it also records um, environmental variables as well. So you can kind of match up why that shark is making that movement or interaction at that certain time. Along with all the camera equipment, we're really trying to find new ways to study these sharks. For us, it's really important that we use non-invasive methods because we really don't want to alter their natural behavior. So one of the techniques that we're using is called environmental DNA. So generally speaking, what this is, is you would take a water sample, send that off to a lab, get it analyzed, and they can tell you what animals were at that location at that point in time. It's usually about two days or so. Um, so instead of, you know, going out and sampling an area using nets or long lines per se, we can go out, just take a sample of water, and we're able to see any sort of animal that was there over that period of time that we may not have even seen with our own eyes. So that's been really helpful, which is a really new technology that allows us to see what animals are in the area, even if we're not seeing them ourselves. So we're also taking tissue samples off free swimming animals, and we're looking at reproductive hormones, which can tell us if that shark is in a reproductive state or not. We're also looking at isotope ratios, which can tell us what that animal has been eating. Each environment has its own unique ratio, so we're able to find out where that shark came from and see where it might go next. So it's essentially placing a tag on the animal without actually placing a tag on it, which is really unique. How amazing is it that we have the technology to learn about marine life without harming them, or in some cases, without even coming into contact with them? You've both been filming and studying sharks for a significant amount of time. In your research, what is the most interesting or surprising thing that you've learned about sharks? The most surprising thing I would say is that we are continuously learning about these animals every single trip out. Even with everything that we already know about them, they are always surprising us with new behaviors and encounters that we never expected to have. Yeah, I don't really think there's like a most surprising thing. I think they're constantly doing things that are unexpected. It just really never really seems to get boring with them. It always seems like the more that you you look into what they're doing, the more that you know, you don't really see the whole big picture. Uh, probably the most surprising thing I've ever seen them do is behavioral. It's just like something that they may do as far as like you can really clearly see their... They're, they're frustrated with something or they're afraid of something or if they're just doing a certain thing. Um, uh, I guess there was like another, there was another time where I actually had a shark tooth and that shark tooth had all this like, uh, kind of like almost like a, a coating on it, like a slippery coating on it. And I remember I like hit it in my glove to see how sharp it was. And because of the slippery coating, it like cut it a lot faster and a lot quicker and it was like one of the things that surprised me is that like sharks had this built-in lubrication to like these these like teeth that they have like almost like how people that work with knives like lubricate their knives when they're doing incisions and cuts it's like it's just to like make a cleaner cut and that was one thing that really surprised me about them so i don't know they're constantly surprising me i can't wait to hear what we learn next about these amazing creatures Unfortunately, many species of sharks are disappearing from our oceans. What factors are putting sharks at risk and how does your work focus on this conversation? And, and what can we do here on dry land to help the remaining shark populations? Uh, I think probably the biggest factor putting sharks at risk is misinformation. 
Uh, people are always misinformed at like sharks' intentions, where they're going, what they're doing. It, it, it always seems like no matter what you really hear about them, there's always some part of it that was really incorrect. So, I mean, like hopefully with all the stuff we do, filming sharks, it raises more awareness and it it helps future generations fall in love with them and and helps tell their stories and you know it just it kind of just keeps that going but at the same time it's like we're just i feel like our work is keeping people better informed of like what these sharks are doing so I, and like what their whole overall state of being all throughout the world i mean the more we know the better equipped we are to well, like handle those situations so yeah i would say misinformation for sure yeah, I would agree with everything that Joe just said. I think there's a lot of factors, but misinformation is a really, really big one that I think gets overlooked a lot. Um, our work really focuses on conservation. We're not just looking at movement patterns and where they came from and where they're going. We're really trying to figure out why they're using this area. Why are they here? If, if we can show that this area they're using for an important life event, such as mating or nursery ground, or an area where they're finding lots of food every year, then we can protect this area for future generations. There's always a way that you can help, even if you are on land and not out on the water. So a, a really good example would be if you're at your local grocery store or a restaurant or just buying any non-food related products, just to look at the label and make sure that there aren't any shark products um, in what you're buying. However, do remember that sometimes it isn't just labeled as shark, you know, it could be under squalene or omega-3s or any other type of name. So it's good to research, um, to research that as well and see what shark might come up as. And if you do find it in a product that you are buying, make sure to educate others and make sure they know as well if they're buying that product that that does contain shark. That's so important. It's always a good idea to inform yourself about the products you buy. This one's for Lauren. Your work must take you to coastal locations all over the world and expose you to many different shark species. Tell us about one of your favorite or most memorable places that you visited. We have been very fortunate to travel all over the world to study sharks. I would say that to this day, my favorite place is right here in New England. I never expected myself to say this like 10 years ago, but the more we work here and the more we spend time here, we have so many species. I mean, from warm water species to cold water species, whales, dolphins, you just have an influx of everything for so much of the year that we really just have everything right in our backyard and I'm really grateful that we live here. With over 50 shark species in the waters off the east coast of the United States, I can see why that would be your favorite place. Lauren and Joe, what advice would you give kids who are curious about exploring sharks or other ocean life, but aren't sure what type of career path they can follow? Yeah, I, I guess like if there was a really like message that I would give to someone interested in working in sharks is that like to really just, you know, do a good job and make future generations respect and treat them with the care and the respect they deserve. You know, always be true to yourself, always be true to the animals. Uh, for sure, follow the things that you love and try not to get caught up in all the other stuff on the sidelines to just like really just look at what's in front of you and just keep on that path. And if you can just keep on that path and never give up at it, you will definitely make it to the places you want to. I agree with everything Joe said, but for my own personal experience, for anyone that really wants to be involved with the ocean, I would suggest doing as many volunteer work and internships as possible. That's what I did and I found that it really helped me figure out what I wanted to do. Um, and if you have a passion for that animal and you keep going, I mean, you will make it. It's all about having that passion and hard work. Passion and hard work definitely wins every time. Whenever I'm speaking to students, I try to lead with their passions first. So what is it that you love most? And I bet you we can find some STEM behind that passion you have. And when you can connect your passion to science, technology, engineering, and math, you can do really cool things for your career and have an awesome impact in the world. You can literally invent the change that you wanna see in the world. 
And one last question, just for fun. Do you guys have a favorite shark? My overall favorite shark since I was a kid has been the hammerhead shark. I think they're a really unique looking shark. I would have to say my favorite shark to film is the mako. Um, over time, this has become a really hard question to answer because I truly do love all the species that we encounter and it's really hard to pick just one because it's constantly changing. Um, as far as my favorite shark, I, 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 I'd say that I'm pretty partial to the mako and the blue shark. But um, overall, I try to make my favorite shark the one I'm working with at that time because it's like it's it's just always like you're lucky for any of them that you get. You know, the more that I do this, the more that I know that like spending time with any one of them is not guaranteed. So I try to like like think of them all as being like really important to me. So I don't know. I mean, maybe the mako, maybe the blue shark, but. <laughs> Really, any of them, I'm, I'm pretty good with. I love them all. Hearing you talk about hammerheads, makos, and blue sharks makes me want to learn more. There really are too many fascinating shark species to choose a favorite. So thank you, Lauren and Joe. I love chatting with you guys and hearing about your work to learn more about, document, and conserve sharks. It was really great to be here. We want to say thank you to all the students for tuning in and to Jay for having us. Um, it was a really great time. We really enjoyed it. Thank you, Jay. It was really great to be here, and thank you to all the students for tuning in. We really appreciate everything. Everyone, make sure to follow Lauren and Joe on social media to keep up with their work, and don't forget to check out the Discovery Channel's Shark Week on Discovery Plus to see over 20 hours of incredible shark programming, including Dawn of the Monster Mako featuring Lauren and Joe. But don't go anywhere yet. Let's take a moment to hear more from our partners at the US Air Force and the US Space Force. Make sure you check out the Air Force and Space Force online and follow them on social media to keep up with all the amazing things they are doing. Thank you again to the United States Air Force, the United States Space Force, and the Discovery Channel for making this XTEM All Access series possible. And thank you for tuning in today. Don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube description below and follow us on social media to get XTEM updates about new episodes. You won't want to miss any of them. Plus, you'll get access to weekly content for students and teachers, such as STEM trivia for students, classroom tips for teachers, and so much more. Scan this code to access resources from today's programming, including NGSS aligned lesson plans and worksheets, along with other free STEM resources from today's speakers, our partners, and more. With your parents' permission, tell us how you were inspired today by taking us at USA Science Fest, hashtag XTEM, and me at J Flores Inspires. And keep up with me through my website and social media here. Definitely check out all of the at-home science experiments that I have on YouTube with my series, It's Not Magic, It's Science. I hope you enjoyed today's program. This episode along with the entire series is available on demand at no cost. Check them out at usasciencefestival.org. I had a blast being your host today, but don't sign off just yet. You'll want to stick around through the end of this video for a fun trivia game that you can do in the classroom or at home. Have fun.